Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've presented a couple times here for Independence. Hey, Bruce, I didn't even see you over there. Um, and just, I've been, we were talking about it the other day, and somebody asked, well, how long have I been turning? I said, I don't know. I had no idea. I really didn't remember. And then we got talking about the Northland Club and how long it had been around. And I think I started turning about 2005, um, as time allowed. Anybody else have one of those situations? You get to turn as time allows? That's all I ever get to do. Since I have my son, and he's six years old, and my uh, daughter, who's 18 months old, I don't spend a whole lot of time in the workshop. So they asked, would you do a demo for the Independence Club? Yeah, that'll give me an excuse to have to turn, because I gotta practice. Unfortunately, my plans to practice a little bit every weekend turned into only last weekend. So this was a very fast put together project. And when, you, when, you, when Mel and I talked last Thursday, I hadn't decided for sure what I was gonna do yet. But I decided that this idea that just came to me one day to make a wall hanging type thing, I saw something online that looked similar to what I was wanting to do. And I decided, yeah, I think I can make that a reality. I think I can really make that happen. So I drew some pictures during my lunchtime, you know, at work, I drew some pictures. I'm sure people walking by me in the break room were like, what's he doing? I'm, I was sketching, trying to come up with what would be a good size, what would be a right size. For those of you who saw my wall hanging over there, it's quite beefy, but it was my first try. You'd have to have a pretty stout wall to hang it on, or at least a drywall anchor and maybe a stud to put it into, because that's a beefy wall hanging. Um, that backer board's pretty thick, so I'll be taking some of the weight out of the one I do here in a little bit. Now, I decided because of time, I didn't want to try to make a bowl and a platter or the backer board. I just didn't think we'd have time to get that accomplished. So I went ahead and made the bowl. A couple things I was talking about over there a few minutes ago is I'm not just going to make a bowl or a platter. Y'all been asking for somebody to do a demo of a platter for a long time. So well, I can do that. And every time we came around to me doing another demo every year, we forgot about doing the platter. So this time I said, well, Vaughn, how about I do the platter, but I do a wall hanging too, so we have a double. So you get two demos tonight for one, the price of one, okay? Um, it's also going to include using a glue block, because we're going to do a, anybody ever start without none of those fancy chucks? Just had to do face plates and glue blocks? Well, if you're going to do a platter, you pretty much got to use a glue block. Otherwise, you lose the wood. You lose too much material to actually be able to make the platter. And if you go in and spend a couple hundred bucks on a nice fancy block of wood, you're going to want to use every piece of that wood. Are there, are there any other wood misers in, the, in here? Yeah, I, I heard all the demos about, oh, I used a piece of scrap. This came out of a piece of that scrap and this scrap. and Yeah, so there are several wood misers here in the room. So we're going to show that as well. Um, before I get started, though, I did mention about I made that bowl. And I hadn't turned a bowl in a long time. And I was so proud of that bowl. Then I cut it in half, and that hurt so bad. But I'll tell you something I didn't realize. If you're ever struggling with getting the walls of your bowl an even thickness, or how to do that, take a bowl and cut it in half. And you'll get to see whether or not you got an even thickness and how well you did. And I'll go ahead and pass this around. Well, you're right. It would not hold any M&Ms, because that's the first thing my son asked about that wall hanging. Can I put candy in that, Dad? I don't blame him. I like his thought process. I really do. Now, a couple things that I'm going to... Um, Y'all that maintain the equipment, turn your eyes away. Uh, or avert your eyes right now. Because I've, I've put my finger across this and felt it. This is rough. If I want to turn a platter, I need smooth. Because as I'm reaching out across that, that tool rest, if it's bouncing, I can't hold it down and get a good smooth flow. So I brought myself a file. Couldn't find my good file. Then I realized where it was. Somewhere in my garage after I sharpened the lawnmower blades. <laughs> So I'm just going to make sure this is nice and smooth. Somebody did a demo on CA glue, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that that's CA glue that's fouling up my file here. Oh, that's a lot better. Now, if I were really um, anal about it, and I am, um, Get out a piece of an old candle and I'm going to wax it. That's one of those free tips. That makes your tool slide and move real easy. So, whoever was talking about the demo where you, the girl got up there and moved the hips immediately, 
that wax makes that makes it almost feel like you're a decent turner, kind of like sharpening your tools, right? Feel a lot better when you have sharp tools, don't you? So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make the glue block, and you can see I've used this glue block before. That's got the, still got the super glue on it from when I made it that thing the other day, so I have to clean that off. But um, and I brought my chuck from home so I can follow it. Um, when I m mount a waste block in the chuck, I always mark where it's at. So you can see I got a one here, and then I marked where it goes in that chuck so I can put it back in. It's as close to true as possible. Okay, one of those little tips that nobody really tells you, and I think it's kind of important and handy. So, yeah, if you forget to do it, you're kind of out of luck. You just do it again. But you know the best part about this hobby? All this stuff we use grows on trees. <laughs> Anybody know the best kind of wood to use? Free, free. free wood, that's right. I knew we had a sharp group here. Until I saw y'all and watched y'all cut up all that nice looking wood and make it into small little pieces then glue it all back together. You know, I'm not a segmenter in case anybody has guessed that yet. But you know what? I'm going to be a segmenter tonight because I'm going to take two pieces of wood and glue them together to make one piece. That's segmenting, right? There's no, no, is, is there anything about how many segments you got to have? I didn't think so. And if there are, I don't have to keep demo in here. <laughs> but you can make really big pieces out of a little wood when you segment it. You, that, save, you, you save a lot of wood. It's possible. Okay. So, all right. Let's see where I'm at. Fancy. Is this how this is supposed to work where the delay is not noisy and loud? It's a new experience for me. Okay. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is clean that old super glue off. I still don't quite have all of it gone, so I'll do a little more. <coughs> and just to let you know, the more, more um, times you use, a waste block and oh that's got a knot in it or something. Yeah, I wonder who put that knot in there. Hmm. Okay. Everybody can draw this way. Clean up the edges a little bit, get it nice and flat. And it's okay to have a slightly concave. That's okay when you're doing your glue block. I don't think that's right, Bill. I need something nice and flat to put up against it to see if I've got it. No, no, I'm still center proud. You can see there's still spaces on either side. So I still gotta get some more of the center out. It's a little bit, a little complex, but the outside edges where I want the 90 to be, the nice flats to be on the outside edges are actually flat. So we're going to say that's good. I got a screen up so everything's okay. Right? No? I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Where'd my other safety glasses go? Ah, there we go. I'm like, those safety glasses don't feel right because they're the wrong ones. Those are the ones my son uses in the workshop. Okay, now in, and also in doing the glue block, a couple things you got to do here. You want to get yourself a little bit of a chamfer or channel, whatever you want to call it, because you got to have a place for that glue to sit when it goes in that edge. 
Now, in getting the block ready that you're going to put it on. Now, I went ahead, this was square when I started, obviously, so I went ahead and marked across the corners and then kind of just roughed it out on my bandsaw. So I was working with more of a circle to start. Because it does, it no, it's nobody's fun to watch that beat me up as I'm cutting the corners off. And I don't really like that part either. So I've got my center point there. So my center point, and I didn't get my, <laughs> didn't get my compass out. But I will. That was the hardest part in getting ready for the demo was packing everything. There we go. So first thing I gotta do though is I need to have a center point marked because I gotta prep the wood before I can do a glue block. And I failed to bring my instrument of percussion with me. Anybody got an instrument of percussion? Huh? Thank you. Ah, instrument of percussion. You all got one of these in your shop, don't lie. I need to make a big hole there because I'm going to scrape some of that wood off. Because if I don't scrape that wood off, <coughs> then I'm not going to have any place to work on because I need a nice flat surface to glue to. And that's one of the harder parts here. So I'm going to start out here by measuring from the center of this to the edge of there. Okay. Go here and I'm going to so I gotta have a place where I'm gonna put my glue block, right? Now it never hurts to have better measuring lines, so put one inside of it too. And then put one on the outside as well for scope. Right? So that way when I get ready to put that on there, I can see where I'm at. Now, granted, I haven't scraped this surface off yet, but this gives me an idea. I'm gonna do everything dry fit here. And there's gotta be a button here somewhere. Ah. on here. I don't know if you can you get this from over there? Can you? Over here. I think I can do it like this. So what I'm going to do when I get ready to bring it up here, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to be watching it so I can put that glue in there, get it ready. Then I got put it right on my lines. That's what I'm going to do. Because the lines are for me to know to measure from. So I get it as centered as possible. Okay. So that's what we're going to work from now. I'll scrape that off. And I don't know any better way to do this than like this. I think it's called a hand point. Well, you know, for those of you who have those fancy woodworking equipment like that, I've got a pretty big ridge right there I've got to deal with. It. see how good your screen is. That did not instill confidence I noticed among the folks in the front row. Oops. Come back here and measure this again so I get the right measurement. Or as close as I can anyway. Can I offer a tip here? Sure, go right ahead. Build a small hole through your uh, waste block. Use a wire. To center it up. What fun would that be? No, but a lot easier. <laughs> well, you know, we got to show them the hard way first. You know that, right, Mike? <laughs> I bet you're one of those people who has one of those jigs that you can stick through the chuck, tap it so you know where to, when you reverse turn it, you know, get it exactly centered, right? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you got a vacuum chuck, don't you? Okay. So, <laughs> okay, now, you all had a demo about CA glue. We're going to use some CA glue. Um, I'm going to go for thick CA glue and accelerator or activator or whatever they call it. A um, couple things to mention here as far as this goes. Never ever spray the accelerator or activator with the glue bottle top open. 
Lesson learned the hard way. Okay? So I want to put a dot right in the center. Make a ring in there. And don't, don't be chintzy with the glue. Because this is going to hold it on or off the lathe. And I threw one off the lathe the other day. So don't worry about the glue. So I'm going to shut that up. Glue is cheap compared to Dr. Bill's. Glue, your glue is absolutely cheap compared to Copay's. You're absolutely right. That was one of the things I promised my wife I would not do anything intentionally stupid. Intentionally. Okay. So, again, I'm spraying this way over here. Okay. Because, again, if you spray near that glue over here, you just contaminate your field and you're going to have to scrape it off and do it again. So now I'm going to get this as close as I can to the edge of that line and there that I want to use. I'm going to come right down on it and tilt in there. Oop, and I move the block and I did it. It's pretty close. It's already starting to solid up. So now, anybody got any good jokes while I stand here and tell this part? I did hear a good one today. Uh, of course, I remember I got a six-year-old, so that's where most of my jokes, that's the level. Did you know that a koala bear is not a real bear? It doesn't meet the qualifications. Yeah, I told you, I didn't have any good jokes. I only have jokes that are good for six-year-olds, okay? Yeah. And, you know, one time I actually thought I was pretty sharp and pretty smart. I sent in puns to a literary contest. Sent in 10 puns. I didn't win. No pun in 10 did win. That terrible? Yeah. See, I got, I got lots of bad jokes. Didn't say any of my stuff was good, but you get what you pay for. Okay? So, we got that on there now, and I'm going to get my thick CA glue out again. Now I'm going to go around the outside edge of this and make myself a real nice glue joint. And I want to rub back and forth with the glue bottle as I put the glue in there because I don't want any air bubbles. Because air bubbles mean that I have weak joints. I have weak joints anyway, but that's for another reason. That's got that part done. I do that to knock the CA glue away from the top so it doesn't get stuck up in the nozzle. I don't know. I don't know if it works or not. It makes me feel better. So again, at this is the point where I usually leave it set on the lathe for a good 20, 30 minutes, but we don't have 20 or 30 minutes, so we're just going to go here in a few minutes. Talk about a couple other little things that I do that I figured out while I was making this project. As you can see from the piece over there that I made my prototype, I actually just put a wall hanger on it, like you'd hang a picture frame with. Um, well, you know what I realized as I was doing that? And I spent about 45 minutes trying to get that square to the bowl in the front so it would sit, hang on the wall level. I had a contraption with blocks of wood set up and squares, and you know, and I mean, I was just, I'm like, that is just way too much work. I gotta come up with a better way to do this. And then last night as I was showering up, I had the epiphany. I'll just cut a groove in the back, put it at an angle, and then you can hang that thing any way you wanna hang it. Upside down, right side up, sideways. But I got a lathe, I can make that groove. I can make grooves. I don't need one of those fancy router things with a keyhole bit and get it all lined up properly. So that's one of the other things we're gonna do. And once I, get it, once I get it mounted here and I'll make my spot for the chuck, for this I'll, I'm gonna do a recess so I can expand my chuck jaws out into it, okay? Because um, this is gonna be against the wall. Nobody's ever gonna see that part, okay? It's gonna be against the wall. So I'm not too worried about if anybody critiques it or not, okay? <clears throat> and after I show it off at the next wood turning club, no one will ever see the back of it again because it's gonna be against the wall. That's what it does, okay. Hadn't fell off yet. That's a good sign. I'm also not going to test it either. My glue's not wet anymore, so I'd say the accelerator worked. 
We'll find out just how well here in a few minutes. Now, um, anybody remember the rules of wood turning safety? Always bring the tailstock up when you start. I think the other night when I was practicing this, had I brought the tailstock up, it wouldn't have flown off the lathe. Because it, now it's pushing against that glue joint. It's helping to set that glue joint even tighter. Okay. Which is not a bad thing. Yours actually holds on like it's supposed to. I have to stop and tighten mine occasionally. I don't see a new lathe. I, I think there'll probably be a pickup truck in my future before there'll be a new lathe in my future though. So, Which neither one's incredibly likely. So. And I'm, this is kind of bowl turning, or this is platter turning. Is that anybody, how many people have turned a bowl? How many have turn, turned a platter or a plate? Lots of people, okay. So um, that's kind of essentially what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm like, I'm like, I'll do the edges first. Ooh, that's a real nice big splinter that's gonna come off and hit me in the face. So I'll do the edge first to get it into round. You always wanna do your turning right over the, when you're gonna be cutting out, especially roughing out like this. I might not be too close, what do you think? I didn't file enough away to make that sharp enough to, to turn it for me. Um, and this is just standard bowl gouge stuff here. I'm not trying to take any big aggressive cuts for you folks out there that got half inch bowl gouges and stuff. Three quarter inch bowl gouges, one inch bowl gouges. Somebody out there's got one. Okay, I know you do. I was at the auction when you bought it. Because I bought one too. <laughs> Haven't it mounted in a handle yet, I'm afraid of it. While I'm doing this, I'll give you a really cool tip. When you're turning in there and you're cutting along that edge, have you ever noticed your hand get hot where those shavings are hitting against your hand? Anybody here chew gum? Chew some gum and stick in that little hole groove right there and it'll deflect the shavings off and won't hit your hand. <laughs> Learn that in the wood turning demo. Oh, we're getting loose here. I forgot to tighten that up. Oops. Okay, we're going to stop here. Yep, something's loose somewhere. Hmm? My glue joint looks pretty good. So. You tighten the chunk up. Well, I did. Maybe I didn't tighten up enough against them. Mm. Now, now it's your fault if I can't get it off. You didn't tighten the chuck up, yeah. We'll see here. Well, I pretty well got round. Jaws on the chuck? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll double check those. Oh, that was it. That had enough play in it. That had enough play in it. So we'll go ahead and bring that back up here. Of course, now it's not going to be true because I tightened the chuck again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you need to loosen it up, bring your chuck up and push it back up against your tent. We're going to be okay. we got time. I'm working on a time schedule now. Oh. <laughs> I agree, though, what you're saying.
Okay, that tail stock's making me really, really nervous. Anybody ever been poked in the arm by one of those? Yeah, that's why I'm moving out of the way altogether. Still think my glue joint is good though. <laughs> too far down. David, I don't know if you see it. There's a flat on this this side. Yeah, I know it's there. Oh, okay. I'll cut that off in a minute or two. Good. Good. Yeah. There we go. That's what I need to do. Okay, why does this not want to tighten down on me? Ah, there we go. This is one of those left-handed Canadian thread things. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I don't think this tool is uh, dull yet, but it's still not enough. Okay. And I went to the half inch bowl gouge. Okay. I'm doing right now is just chew it up. I'm not trying to worry about any quality of any cut or anything right now. Because once it gets chewed up, it makes you feel so much better because it's actually in round and you know. That is one thing about turning platters, you have to think of where, whether or not your tool rush will go all the way around the piece. Because I have turned a 10 inch platter before. When you get out, start getting more space out here, my little tiny glue block is not enough room to get past my chuck. I'd have to have a longer glue block. So for, for turning platters, that's your tip of the day. Not as good as the catch of the day, but the tip of the day anyway. You want to take light cuts and kind of sneak up on it. And that's too low again. <clears throat> and again, I'm just, all I'm trying to do is true things up. I'm not trying to worry about any cuts or any. Because when I turn it around in the chuck, then we'll have it true. I want to take nice light cuts because I'm pushing against that glue joint. And I'm being incredibly nervous where my fingers get near that chuck. In case you all saw that. You couldn't see me shivering or shaking. Okay, good. I'm glad. I hid that well then. <laughs> okay, so now we'll get in here and time to lay out our spots and I will go ahead and get that fixed up too. Because this that's going to be the back, but I, I'm still going to make it a little bit more narrow. Not much, but a little bit. Because I'll take most of my weight off of the front. But I want to leave a nice spot back here where I got some extra, extra heft, if you will. That was for your benefit in case you wonder what that would sound like catch. Anybody buy that? Now, let's see if we got rid of that whole thing there. Oh, we did. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So now we're ready to lay out our chuck, our size we need for our jaws, right? 
We'll um, they have some of those fancy caliper tools, you know. I thought I brought them. I bet I know where they're laying out on the lathe at home. But we want to measure this to, so that the chuck can expand out into it. So right now I've got it expanded quite a bit around my chuck, or around that. And this is a small plank. If I were doing a big planter, I'd want a bigger recess in here to hold. I want more space to hold on to. Because if, you if you're going to try to recess mount a big piece of wood, you need the three inch jaws, the number three jaws, to really get expanded out in there to hold on to it. Okay. I rarely work with anything that big because it goes along with the intentionally stupid thing, thing I told you about earlier. Okay. And you can have all know all your measurements of where everything goes and stuff on this, but you know. Come out in the right spot. <laughs> Still not in the right spot. That's close enough. Because I'm working with wood here, I'm not working with metal. You got any engineers out here? Yes, yeah, so there's at least one of you out here, aren't there? Yeah, so. purposes. I'll mark that so y'all can see it. I want to be somewhere right in there. Raise it up again. Because <coughs> now I'm essentially scraping, right? That's dull. That's a big enough tool to do that job there. I'm going to get a little bit more, make me feel a little more comfortable. Because I don't worry about Harvey. Pretty close to a 90 inside there. And that's purely for decoration. That serves no purpose whatsoever. Just because I think it looks nice to find that inside there when you look at something. Because you wood turner people will turn my pieces over and look at the back. So you need some decoration and some gauze and things like that, okay? So, huh? Right, once it goes against the wall, yeah. So I put that tool down before I did that other part that I was telling you about. Remember how I told you I needed a place to hang it? Let's make that part where we're gonna hang it. Now remember it's gonna hang down, right? So it's gonna be cut back in a little bit that way. So make myself a little bit of clean out space here. Oops. I don't want to use the dreaded skew chisel as a scraper. Oh, that's I don't have my space big enough yet. And I didn't bring my little skew chisel with me. So I got this. This is a skew chisel.
Okay, so I under cut up underneath there. So now when it goes on that screw or nail or whatever, it will hang there. And if you want to hang it upside down, you can hang it upside down. I don't know how you'd hold M&Ms in it upside down, but you could do that. Okay. So now at this point, you get to watch the really fun part of this whole process, right? Sanding. I'm going to skip the sanding for the group here tonight, but I am going to show on the front side, I'll show you the process for those of you who haven't seen it, of using a power drill and discs to do sanding. So for those of you who may not have seen that yet. Now, unfortunately, I got to get this off the glue block, don't I? And that is the tough part of this process. The nice long parting tool is really handy for this. And I brought my beefy big parting tool for this. Now, for my friends in the CA Glue fan club, okay, uh, since I know that was a demo last week, or last month, go ahead and buy yourself some oil tablecloths. Super glue or so, those plain old cheapy magnets from the hobby store in them, in the corners. Put that right over your lathe bed. And the magnets hook down and hold that. Whoa. I'm glad they didn't hit my foot. So when you're doing those CA glue finishes, it doesn't get all over your lathe bed. Then you don't have to scrape it off. Hmm. Again, that's one of those lessons learned the hard way. Anybody else learn a lesson the hard way ever? Yeah. I'm a connoisseur. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut that glue glue um, in that um, channel. I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to do is cut that away. Oh, that CA glue stinks. I'm not going to go very far. You did notice how I was doing that. I was like, kind of leaning back. Yeah, we got past it. Okay, good. Now, if I did this the right way, a few gentle tugs, you want to make sure you tug with the grain. It should just come right off there. That's a pretty good glue joint. What do y'all think? <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it. I'll get Mel's instrument of destruction out again. Now, if this breaks, whoever said just tap it, there we go. So that's what the glue joint in the back looked like. Okay. By the way, I wouldn't do that with a lighter wood than this hard maple or maybe walnut, a good hardwood. Really? So that's the glue block portion. And we'll find out how long my accelerator did. Yeah, it's dry. So pass that around if anybody wants to see the, what's left of the glue block portion there. So that's a glue block. And like I said, if you're going to do platters, you want to use the glue block so you don't waste the pieces. Okay. So now I got my recess to expand out into. Whew, that fit. But I want to make sure it's in there nice and flat on all the edges. This is the hard part because you got to use your brain the other way because you're expanding out into it as opposed to tightening down. Okay. So now, another lesson learned. Don't do too much. Because the recess is not as strong as if you're squeezing down on the fibers. Expanding out into them. So now I'm going through the front of the platter. Get rid of that. Because if that gets caught up on the edge of this um, piece of wood, that's a really nifty noise. It scares the crap out of the turner too. Anybody here fly an airplane? Familiar with the concepts of aviation? The propeller is just a fan that keeps the pilot cool. You turn it off and watch them sweat. Yeah. <coughs> so, now we got to get things back and around, don't we? Is this where I don't forget to check the wider? Yeah. About a 30 degree angle to the left. Yeah. That's pretty good about being true. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I'm just roughing this out again because that's that part you know I couldn't get smooth before, right? That bouncing, that noise here, that was me not holding the tool down tight to the uh, tool rest. Mm. 
Okay. So, this is the point where you got to decide what you want the face of this project to look like. Do you want it to look, you want to have any embellishments in the front? Do you want the edges to be curved? How do, what, your, what do you want your designs to look like? And I'm moving that out of the way because when you're turning a platter, if you're going to put a rim on something, you know, like you want a nice, uh, I guess, flange, for lack of a better word, that flare of a plate, you have to cut from the other direction. And it feels completely wrong and backwards to do it. I have seen turners stand on the other side of the lathe. My workshop is not set up like this so I can stand on the back side of the lathe. What you're going to do is you're going to get in there and make your cut like so. Get your cut started, and you're just going to follow it out. And I didn't get a very clean cut at all. Boy, I got lots of ridges in there. I'd like to say I can blame the wood, but I can't, that's me. Which means the tool may be though. That's why you gotta have at least three sharp bowl gouges, maybe four. So, now, when I mentioned that working on the project here, something else you wanna do, if you're gonna do a plate or platter, you wanna work this outside edge before you take away any more mass in the middle of the plate. Because if you take away that mass, it allows your things to start flexing on you as you start cutting. So I'm going to, since you all kind of talked about platters and plates, I'm going to basically do that kind of a shape almost. But my main goal is to get this front edge clean. Oh, it's amazing what a nice sharp tool will do. So round this edge over for a little, for a little bit. kind of nice. Something different. You want to come up with something you like, right? And the back of my plate is not running true. i got to fix the back before I go any further, too. And I'm calling it a plate because that's really how I think of this project and what I'm thinking of this project like because it really does feel more like I'm making a plate than it does a wall hanging or anything like that. Feeling very flying saucer ish. Anybody planning to go and storm area 51? You all are? Yeah. As a club. As a club. Yeah, you're in. You, that's a fundraiser. You can go sell flying saucer stuff. You hope your flat is not one of the flying saucers. Yeah, not while you're turning, for sure, yeah. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite scenes from the um, Back to the Future movies, when they go back in, like, the olden days and the cowboy days, and he grabs a, grabs a pie tin and throws it, and he looks in the bottom of the pie tin and it says Frisbee. That's where that came from. They were Frisbee pie tins. That's how that all originated. And I'm like, yeah, that was a nice little, because my family has some of them. They were kind of hand-me-downs over the generations. They were hanging on the kitchen wall of the farmhouse. I grew up around. Okay, so now we got to clean this up because that's still really, really rough. So I'm sure there are some of you out here that have subscribed to the no scraper method. I have scrapers. I use them. I'm not afraid to use scrapers, okay? I'm going to try to do this with a bowl gouge, and I want to show the difference when I, because, you know, you saw me cut the other direction. You can cut in this way, too. I don't think you get as nice a cut. Because my whole intention here is I want flat. If I want to glue that bowl on there, i got to have a completely flat surface, don't I, to have a good glue surface. It's got to be flat. So I'm essentially just scraping here too now. But I'm doing really, really light cuts. I'm trying to keep an eye down to see if I'm getting flat. I think I've still got a convex shape. But again, the best way to find that out, get yourself a nice long ruler or something that's nice and true. Stick it up against it. Ooh, look at all those hills and valleys. Can you see straight down on that? 
I got lots and lots of hills and valleys. Let's mark those so I can find them again. Well, let's see, it's high here. It's high here. That's pretty much where the high spots are, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so now I know where my high spots are. I'm going to go to my scraper. And I forgot my burnishing tool at home, but I have a whole bunch of tools that are also high speed steel. They'll bring that edge back up so I can get that nice curl coming off of it. Now, to use a scraper though, I paid a lot of money in a class to learn how to use a scraper. So, I'm going to be angled down just about right on the center line or slightly above the center line. I'm way above the center line, but always put that scraper up underneath your arm here. Anybody ever do one like this? Anybody ever been hit in the side of the head? Well, good. I'm glad nobody's had that happen to them. By putting it underneath your hand like that, and you can see the kind of shavings I'm taking off there. I'm not taking much off there. A little more here because I got a lot to cut off over here. I'm too close. Got to get myself a little more space here. That's why you want a nice thick scraper because you're going to reach way out over the over the tool rest, especially if we're going to do the inside of a bowl with a scraper. Still got hills and valleys. Not as severe, but I still got them. Okay. You've only got seven, seven more minutes, goodness gracious. Okay, so this is also the point where you can decide if there's anything else you want to do as far as, you know. Well, I'm getting closer. I'm getting a lot closer to flats, aren't I? Still got some gaps in there, though. Same high spots are still the same high spots, though. Rotate around here where I'm using the sharp edge of the tool. getting closer. I'm getting almost happy with that. Now again this is the point where I get the sander out and I start sanding. I'm just going to show you one grit so you see how to do it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do all of them just because watching somebody sand is kind of like watching somebody you know um, mow grass something like that. Now I have watched the guys at the Royal Stadium mow grass. That's an art. That truly is artistic. So when, you, when the lathe's turning like so, right, coming around this way, you want to have your drill going the opposite way. You're only going to cut, or only going to sand with that corner, that side, that's going the opposite direction. If you bring it around like this, you're going to go, ooh, really neat noises, okay? Um, and you'll probably make a really neat noise too. So, you got to go in the opposite direction the way the lathe's running. I'm just going to sand with that edge. So that's only one grip, but you can kind of see how that technique works, okay? Now, <coughs> yeah, I get to take the, the safety glasses off now. So now I got my spot here, and I have to get my half a bowl and look out and decide how I'm going to mount that, where I'm going to mount it. Oh, darn it. My half bowl is not perfectly cut straight either, is it? I, I'm pretty happy with the backer board, but that bowl is not straight. You no, know, maybe, you yeah, know, because it's still wobbling. So I don't have a hand plane like Mel does. So I get on my big piece of sandpaper. Okay. And I get the back side of the bowl flat. This is 80 grit in case any of you all have never used the grit that high or that low. All right. Oh, that's looking better. I still got more sand. But you get the idea, right? Now, as I was working this project out of my head, 
I was thinking about the hardest part of this project is going to be how do I figure out where to put the bowl and how am I going to get it measured, how am I going to get it mounted to hold it right. I realized something. I got an entire machine here made out of precision machine parts that work together. Okay. I got a tool rest. Right. That'll hold stuff in place. It will also allow me to measure. Because we got a smaller tool rest too. And so say I want to put a line, figure out where I want it to be here, right? So I kind of like it like so. So say that's where I'm gonna mount it in the middle, right? Now granted, this, this won't let me go all the way over here to get it in the middle. I got a 12 inch tool rest, mine will let me get across there. But what you do, take this out, set you a block of wood on top of there. Right? So I got a whole cabinet full over here. So you start setting blocks of wood on there until you get to the right spot. That gives you a place to work from. And then you get your ruler out and you measure on each side. That's why this sharp edge is really handy. You all thought I just did that for decoration, didn't you? Hmm. So and you measure from either side to get it straight where you want it to be. And then now with my bubble over there you may have looked at, I marked down inside here. Because you're not gonna look down inside that once it's hanging on the wall. So that's where I put my mark to have it in the same spot. And I also put two little marks in here. And what I did, I took my 16th inch drill bit, drilled a hole in this side and a hole in that side, right in this nice thick part here, okay? And then I took just a couple nails, put them in there, took them to the grinder, cut off the ends of the nails. Now I have a nice sharp point to poke with, don't I? And then I popped it up against here, got it all measured out right in the right spot, pushed it against it to make my holes. Drill a little hole on that side, put it in there. Then I smeared the whole thing with, um, or I, I set the two nails in these holes I drilled over in here and over in here with super glue, CA glue. And then I put tight bond on the bowl part on this part here. So that's how I got that nice tight fit up against there. And that's how I made the wall hanging piece. Which way should the grain go? However which way you want it to go, Mel. If you want it to match the grain of the bowl, or if you want to, maybe you want to get your wood burning out and do a sunset. Whatever you want to do. I mean, you could, you, the possibilities are kind of endless here about how you want it to do it. And my bowl here, I think the other, the other bowl, half of that other bowl on the other side had prettier grain than this bowl. <laughs> But um, that's how you can make that fit, and that's how you make that work. Okay? So that's how I put that project together. So, and like I said, I glued that over there, and I came to Independence. Y'all were the first people to see it. So I shirt off my very first segmented wood turning piece here at Independence. Because I glued two things together. Okay? Granted, they'd already been turned first before I glued them together. So technically, maybe... You know, I don't know that I fit in the segmenters club yet, but who knows, okay? Because um, you know, remember what George Carlin said, if you take two things that have never ever been nailed together before and nail them together, some schmuck will buy it. So, thank you very much for inviting me to do the demo tonight. <laughs>